Hi there. Uh, I wanted to update you about a very important development between um, Syria and Israel. We've been having uh, quite a few cases of Syrian mortar shells that were kind of flying uh, unintentionally or intentionally from their side to our side on the Golan Heights. And Israel uh, repeatedly responded um, to those uh, unintentional or intentional uh, falling of mortar shells on our side by either sending missiles that destroy Syrian outposts or sending our aircrafts to destroy some other things um, as a response. Our, our policy is very clear. There is no chance in the world that uh, you are going to somehow send something that will hit our territory and we will not respond. This is our um, basically policy with the Palestinians in Gaza as well as with anything that comes out of Syria. The important development that I wanted to report has to do with uh, the fact that um, last night Israeli F-16s uh, took off from the Ramad David Air Base here at the Jezreel Valley and uh, strike uh, within the uh, deeper part of Syria as a result of a falling of a mortar shell in Israel yesterday during the daytime. Um, for the first time in probably the all five years of the Syrian um, civil war, the Syrian army and all the Syrian official media uh, channels reported that Syria responded with um, ground-to-air missiles and they uh, basically um, shut down both an Israeli drone and an Israeli fighter jet. Uh, interestingly enough, um, not only that it never happened, um, they did uh, send some of those ground-to-air missiles, but it, they did so after our aircraft were already in our territory about to land. I think that the important development is uh, first that Syria's army is announcing its uh, military action against Israel for the first time. And the second thing is the American-Russian broker deal of peace in Syria, in a sense, something that is obviously not being even uh, reinforced on the ground, uh, kind of gave the Syrians the... the I would say confidence that they should start becoming more aggressive towards any strike that comes from Israel. Um, it starts with false um, reports in their own media, but I'm not going to be surprised if in the near future uh, Israeli aircrafts will indeed go through several uh, live attacks from Syria, which will escalate the situation rapidly. And I've been saying for many, many years now that I believe that if the situation between Israel and Syria and the situation regarding Damascus is indeed the match that will eventually start the war that is described in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Damascus, according to Isaiah chapter 17, will eventually cease to exist, as Isaiah suggests. So... All it takes is some sort of um, loss of control or deteriorating situation between the two countries. I believe also that um, Israel will be wise not to respond harshly in, in, in a large scale unless it is going to be something that um, is of uh, great, I would say, existential threat. And the only thing that we can think of is that which is buried right underneath Damascus, which is the largest reservoir of chemical weapons um, that are still there, even from the time of Saddam Hussein smuggling his into Damascus, and of course the Assad regime, the father and the son, who kept manufacturing in their own country tons of sarin gas and uh, other means of uh, chemical, uh, chemical weapons, which they are using against their own people, even throughout these uh, five years of bloody um, civil war. So 
This is an, an important development that uh, Syria announces for the first time in five years its military action against Israeli jets who, f who were flying above their uh, skies. And it's interesting because um, they are for the first time feeling confident enough to shoot rockets and to somehow respond to any activity of the Israelis um, across the border. I want to remind you all that uh, these kind of developments are very unique. I'm not going live unless it's something extremely important that, that all of us should be paying attention to. Um, all of us should be extremely excited because these are unbelievable times. Uh, Damascus, there is no doubt in my mind, will stop and cease from being a city. The Bible is very clear. Uh, the uh, reliability of the Bible and accuracy of the Bible has been tested uh, for over 3,000 years and it is way more accurate than my own newspaper from this morning. So I trust that uh, those things will happen. We really have no control over them. As I preach more than once, there are two really tracks that um, God is working through in this world. There is a track of the international events that God, by knowing the hearts of the people and the leaders, uh, already predicted uh, things that are going to happen. And that is, of course, what the prophets, um, especially Isaiah and, and Ezekiel, have already spoken of. But then, of course, there is the path of that which God is doing in our own lives. And this has to do with our choices that we make and our walk with Him. And there, if there was any time that we needed to be very close to Him and that we needed to be um, very serious in our walk and, and be all about our Father's business, this is the time. Thank you for listening. Um, this is a live broadcast from Galilee, right next to the Armageddon Valley, right where I live. And I'm looking forward to update you uh, on future events if they are uh, that important. Thank you, and God bless you, and Shalom from Israel.